The Western Cape Department of Health has kick-started its vaccine uh, roadshow here in East River in the Western Cape, uh, where a number of traditional health practitioners have been engaging a health MEC, uh, and Norma French and Bombo. Uh, Minister, very warm good afternoon to you. Uh, on the onset, uh, there have been, I uh, understand, quite a number of questions posed to your department, to yourself, uh, by these um, uh, practitioners. Uh, to just highlight some of the issues that they have uh, asked, uh, some of the questions that they've asked with pert uh, pertaining uh, to the vaccine and also possible uh, conflicts with Western versus traditional medicine in the COVID-19 context? Uh, I think the most important thing is about as traditional health practitioners, uh, they have initially felt to be left out uh, even at the time of during the COVID aspect, the screening and the testing and also uh, getting I mean, engaging with the health system. Because, and they must understand that the traditional health uh, practitioners act um, of 2006 it does make a provision for them to participate and work provincially and also nationally in regards to the partnership between the two departments I mean the departments as well so that now uh, they are involved at the time of the vaccination now they welcome the fact that they are part of the first phase but uh, um, what they are saying is about there have been many issues related to the screening and testing and all of those where they should have been involved. So they do welcome that part because they do work that they do, uh, like uh, bathing someone, um, and uh, also it's about uh, giving enema to someone, all of those. It warrants a closer proximity of less than 1.5. But they are indicating that they will be able uh, just to mobilize as many because they are a, a, a recognized official council, like in the provincial aspect of it, uh, where they can mobilize, but the individuals will make a call whether they want to have a vaccine or not. Minister, you've also mentioned something from the podium just now. Um, there are various uh, methods and ways in which uh, traditionally uh, ailments are being treated uh, from an African medicine point of view. Um, uh, uh, steaming is one of them, you, you've mentioned that as well. Uh, is there reluctance uh, in terms of um, this, this vaccine, not just uh, in the specific sector, but generally, Minister, um, I know that the department, your department nationally as well, there's a huge uh, drive uh, to encourage vaccinations. Is this what you're finding when you're speaking to uh, traditional uh, health practitioners? Uh, uh, for them, uh, I think the, the issue is about uh, what about even the other tools that they use in terms of the treatment, like as I'm saying, the bathing, uh, the cutting, uh, the enemas and all of those. So uh, how could they be able to assist in regard to when the patient has got the symptoms, how come that they are unable to, um, to refer to the patients? not only about them protecting themselves. So it's one of those issues, taking into consideration that all these that I'm mentioning, they are part of the traditional health uh, practitioners uh, act, even also in terms of who are they, those are for the diviners, which is Isangoma uh, um, or Amakreka in the Kosa, and then we have got the traditional birth att attendants, which we don't have as many, uh, unless probably in the deep rural areas in some of the provinces. And then you have got the traditional, which is the, uh, because they are not here, these ones, uh, the traditional uh, surgeons uh, for the initiation, because we do know that initiation now is not allowed in terms of the regulations, but we find that the Department of Culture and Sport, our department, will still have to engage uh, with that group, especially when now the initiation is open in terms of how to make sure in regard to when you are actually uh, involved in the process of uh, operation and whatever, all of those. So it's a whole pack that is required, which is completely different with the uh, Western medicine, because I was trying to explain that for them, the type of healing they use or the type of their interventions, uh, some of it is spiritual because they have to do the connection with their ancestors in terms of finding a diagnosis and how to, to intervene in treating their patients. So the issue of the ancestral part of it is where for us, uh, from this side of the Western medicine, we won't be able to understand. Therefore, we must give them the chance to explain themselves. And then the issue of the um, uh, stopping or avoiding the witchcraft or treating the witchcraft, also we need to have an understanding of how they do it. But what is most important is the actual act, the action that should be focusing on how to stop the spread. So when they bathe, 
do have them to do themselves. So why can't the patient does it? That's how they date the patient. Is, is it necessary during this period to do the cutting where you they have to be so closer, especially if what the patient is positive? So it's some of those issues that you have to address with them. Minister, I understand that in the Western Cape, uh, healthcare workers, just over, over 100,000 of them have been earmarked uh, for to be as part of the first phase. Uh, how many of, of those 103 thousand um in, does it include uh, the traditional uh, health um, um, practitioners the old, the old, the old phase is, is, the, is the register of how many traditional uh, practitioners are on, are on that list um i don't have the figures because some of them they are not necessarily registered according to the thp uh, act but it, within the space of the engagement within the council uh, uh, in the in the sector they know each other because we don't know each other or well, some of them are not registered because even the THP Act at the national level, it, it was never implemented for quite a long time, although it was passed in 2006. It was only 2018 where they approved some of the other sections. So it becomes difficult. So that's why we rely on them. Because I will be going a roadshow like for the whole of the metro substructures, all eight will be done with them. And then they post their, they are the provincial structure. So they will indicate in terms of which other areas where we could be able to go to in terms of that space. So they may join some of like contact workers or others at the time that was started the vaccination. So it depends. Thank you very much. Uh, MEC for Health in the Western Cape, uh, Numa French and Bombo, just explaining to us uh, the kind of engagements that have taken place here today with a number of traditional health practitioners uh, as the province readies itself for the vaccine rollout uh, later this month and next month.